Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to NHL 17 Franchise Mode with your Detroit Red Wings. Yes, we are back here again for the 2018-19 season with your Motor City team. And we made the playoffs again last year for the first time since we took control of this team, year two. And we got eliminated by the eventual Stanley Cup winning Montreal Canadiens in six games in the first round. So we lost to the winners. I mean, that's fine. I mean, we can take some sort of solace in that. But now we're here to start the 18-19 season. Let's take a look at our team. Oh boy, let's take a look at this team. Here is your 2018-19 Detroit Red Wings. On the first line, Justin Abdelkader, Henrik Zetterberg, Gustav Nyqvist. The second line, Anthony Mantha, Dylan Larkin, Franz Nielsen. Third line, Stefan Matteau, Andreas Athanasio, and Darren Helm. And fourth line, Evgeny Sveshnikov, Antoine Vermette, and Riley Sheehan. Defence, we have Danny DeKaiser, Mike Green, Darnell Nurse, Essa Lindell, Xavier Wallet, and James Wisniewski. With our goaltending being Peter Morazic and Jimmy Howard. Scratch players include Luke Glendening and Geordie Ben. So, can you see what the problem with our team is? Our top six is shit. Our bottom six is good. Our top two defence is crap. Our top six defence is good. And our goaltending's awful. So, we've got a couple of problems here, I think, with this team. Uh, I think we're currently in the setting of rebuild. Or we're a rebuilding team currently. Detroit have really handcuffed their team. Like, I mean, I haven't helped too much. But they really have handcuffed their team. So, we have $4 million of cap space. There are still a couple of free agents we can sign. Um, there is Kyle Turris, who wants a one-year contract. He's an unrestricted free agent. We could pick him up. He's 88 overall. I'm thinking we might need to blow up this roster, guys. I'm thinking that we might need to trade away Henrik Zetterberg. I know it's a crazy thing to say, but Henrik Zetterberg is currently playing. If we just take a look, Henrik Zetterberg currently playing at an 87 overall. We already have an 87 overall on centre and an 86 overall. So if we get an 88 up there, that would be much better. And with Zetterberg, we might be able to pick up a winger. He's got $6 million on his contract. Carl Turris wants 7.1. We could probably do it for $7 million. We've got about $4 million of cap space already. So if we trade away Zetterberg, we might be able to actually get ourselves a decent winger up the top here. Maybe somebody to play on the first line. And then I'm thinking maybe somebody like Antoine Vermette if we trade him. Because we have so much depth down the bottom. I did sign Vermette, which was a bit of a silly idea for me. Considering he is taking $4 million at 83 overall. But if we trade away Zetterberg and we trade away Vermette, our centres won't be that bad. Because we could hopefully sign Kyle Turris. Because no other teams want him. We've got Franz Nielsen that can slip into the third line centre. Dylan Larkin can play second line centre. Athanasio can play fourth line centre. And hopefully we'll pick ourselves up a solid guy that can play on the top wing for us. So that's what we're going to do, hopefully. We're going to try and make some trades early. Try and sign Kyle Turris to our team. So Henrik Zetterberg is currently the guy that we're going to trade away. He's not getting any younger. I know it's not something we should do, but we've got to put the team first. You always have to put the team first. So we're looking for a decent winger here. Uh, anybody want him? Buffalo Sabres want him, but they ain't got the salary cap. Chicago are interested in him. They ain't got the salary cap either. Uh, Dallas are interested. Ain't got the salary cap. Neither do... Well, pretty much none of these teams have the salary cap. I think I might know one team that might have the salary cap. And that is the Vancouver Canucks. They're a rebuilding team. Who have they got on their on their winger situation? They've got Ericsson. Ericsson is far too much. And Verton, no. So we need to go defence with this. But they don't have any solid, amazing defensemen. So if we... Oh, the Anaheim Ducks are interested. Uh, who's got the least salary cap that wants this? Let's, let's take a look at Chicago. So they've got Seabrook. They've got Duncan Keith. Duncan Keith's 35 years old. And he's got... Well, he's got five years left on his contract. Bloody hell. Um, so if we look at the left-wingers, who have they got? Ontario Panarin, well, we can't afford him. Got Patrick Kane. Right? Nah, so they don't, have, they don't really have any solid wingers. Um, Dallas, they must have a solid winger, right? Gurinov, they've got Yuri Hoodler, uh, which wouldn't be too bad, I guess. Uh, they've got, oh, they've got Dickinson. Oh, he's 86 at 23 years old. 
That would be a perfect pickup for us, actually. I mean, I think he's got a bit more sa I think he's got a bit more on his side than we do. And we can propose the trade as well because they can sort out their salary cap stuff. So if we traded Henrik Zetterberg away for Jason Dickinson, we've then got that 86 left winger up the top. Sure, it's not amazing. It's not a 90, but it's better than an 85. What's his role? Is he, he's a top six forward. He's a third scoring line forward, but we'd play him on the first line. What were his stats like last year? Um, last year, he had 23 points. He was a minus 14. That's because their team maybe wasn't that good defensively. So we're going to give this a try. Henrik Zetterberg for Jason Dickinson. Will that go through? No, it won't. Okay. Let's see if we can chuck in a draft pick here, just to make sure that they that we sort it out. So draft picks, what do we have? We have first, second, third. Let's go for our third from next year. So a 2020 pick. So Zetterberg and our 2020 third round pick for Jason Dickinson. Will that go through? No, it won't. Okay. They don't want to absorb the contract of Henrik Zetterberg. Then why say that you want him? I never understand when this game does that. They're like, yeah, we'll take Zetterberg. Oh, but we don't actually want his contract. Well, don't say you want him then. Right, is there any other teams? The San Jose Sharks. Let's see what they've got going on there. Uh, let's take a look at left wingers. They have Donskoy. Well, that's awful. Right wingers have got Pavelski. So there's nothing really there that I want. Uh, the St. Louis Blues, they've got some solid wingers. They've got Tarasenko, Yakupov, Berglund. Alexander Semin, who's really upset. Jaden Schwartz. Alexander Steen would be awesome. Robbie Fabry. I don't want to take that risk again with Robbie Fabry. Um, Dimitri Yaksin. I mean, Alexander Steen. That would be the guy we need up the front. I mean, he's 34 years old. And he's got, th oh, he's got three years left on that contract. Though. I really don't want to play with that. Uh, who else wants him? So, let's just take a look at Arizona again. See if there's anybody that they have. Uh, Lawson Krause. Nope, there's nobody on the left wing. On the right wing, we've got Cam Atkinson. Uh, that's not too bad. But he's got three years on a basically the same contract. So, I'm not that interested. Uh, who else has salary cap? That's what I really want to know right now. Uh, oh, here we go. Um, the Ottawa Senators are pretty close salary cap-wise. They have Mark Stone. They have Mike Hoffman. 28 years old to 26 years old for Mark Stone. So he could keep going. He's got seven years on that contract, though. I don't think so. Mike Hoffman, Clark MacArthur. What about defence? They have uh, Eric Carlson. That's goaltenders. They have Eric Carlson. They don't really have anybody else other than that. So oh, this is difficult. Right, let's take a look at the Philadelphia Flyers. They have Sanheim, and they have Provorov, and they have Gostisbehere. Well, wow, they have three elite defensemen. Jesus, that's good. Uh, they've got Maroon. No, they've got nobody on the wing. They've got Voracek. They've got Simmons. They've got Braden Shen. Braden Shen's 86. Wayne Simmons would be an awesome pickup. He's got low cap as well, but look at that trade value. I think we're just going to have to make do with what we've got at the moment. Might have to make some changes at the trade deadline. Like I, I would really like to trade some of these guys away, but... It's just not happening. So, let's go to our first game of the season. We've got a bit of a problem here. I thought I'd take a look, see if there are any trades that we can make, but nobody just wants the salary cap, which is a massive problem for us, salary cap. So, let's hold a team meeting. Okay, so, uh, demanding response. Everybody's happy with that. So, we're going to simulate the first 10 games of the season, period by period, like we always do. Here we go. First game of the season against the Buffalo Sabres. Vermette against Gergensons for the opening face-off. First period. Okay, Danny DeKaiser scores the first goal for the Detroit Red Wings on the 18-19 season. Danny DeKaiser on Robin Lehner. Wow, they only had four shots in that first period. Bloody hell. 16 shots to four in favour of the Red Wings. Second period. Okay, 2-0. Gustav Nykvist, our first line right winger, gets a goal. 32 shots to 12 in favour of the Red Wings. And third period... Okay, they managed to get one back. Justin Bailey on Peter Mrazek. 43 shots that game for the Detroit Red Wings. That is good. Well done, Detroit. For a team that I'm not really expecting much of, if you're getting that many shots, then that's perfect. That's what I need. Oh, we've got a rivalry game against the Colorado Avalanche coming up now. Here we go. Detroit against Colorado. We're in the Pepsi Center. Here we go. Grigorenko against Zetterberg for the opening faceoff. First period. Okay, one nothing lead. Xavier Wallet, our bottom pair left defenseman, scores on Sergei Varlamov. Doubling us up on shots, though, are the Colorado Avalanche. So be careful here, Detroit. 
second period. Okay, they scored three. I did say be careful. Grigorenko scores a pair and Nieto scores one. 30 shots to 11 in favour of the Avalanche. Oh, God. Third period. There you go. 4-1 win. Nathan McKinnon scores on Howard as well. So Howard got a start and he allowed four goals. And Mike Green is injured. Great. Let's replace the player. So, we're 1-1-0 one, one to start the season. I mean, I'm not expecting a huge amount from this team this year. Oh, Tyler Bertuzzi has signed with us. Perfect. So, Tyler Bertuzzi, of course, uh, is one of the restricted free agents that we qualified before the start of the season. Mike Green is out for five weeks. Mike Green is out for five weeks. Oh, my goodness. Mike Green is out for five weeks. Oh, my God. He's, like, one of my best defensemen as well. To say that Mike Green is one of your best defensemen is such a sad thing to admit. But there you go. So, Geordie Ben's going to be playing on that first pair. I might need to change that at some point. We'll see how this game against the Rangers goes. Here we go. So, our first home game of the season. Come on, we've got to beat the Rangers. Here we go. Stepan against Larkin for the opening face-off. First period. Okay, one nothing lead. Derek Stepan scores on Peter Mrazic. Nine shots to eight in favour of the Red Wings, though. Second period. Okay, it's a 2 nothing lead. Glenn De uh, Clen Denning scores on Peter Morazic. 21 shots to 18. I'm going to go times 8 simulation. See if we can get a couple back. Come on, Detroit. If it goes 3 nothing, Okay, Chris Kreider scores on Morazic. Wow. Okay, Pumple manages to get one. But Hellman Abdulkader score on Ranta. And then Chris Kreider gets the empty net goal. Okay, so I was expecting that to just sort of finish the game. But that was our home opener. We lost 5-2. Great. And we lost our regular season opener, so our, our owner isn't very happy with that. Oh, God. So we're 1-2-0 and to start the year. Well, we had a, we won our first game of the season, which is good. We haven't really done much since then. Oh, that's one thing I want to check. Um, Rasmussen for the Griffins. Where is he playing? I want, I want to get him, like, first-line time. Where is Rasmussen? Is he, he's not even in the lineup, is he? How is Colin Campbell playing, but Rasmussen isn't? I, w I want to play Rasmussen. Where is he? It's not even there. Is he playing? Is he playing in junior still? Oh, okay, fair enough. Sure, whatever. And Dowd is playing in the AHL for us. Okay, not a problem. So, let's just go back to what we were doing here. Here we go. Game four of the season against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Bit of a rivalry in the playoffs starting between these two teams. I need to keep winning games to stay competitive. Zetterberg against Palat for the opening face-off. First period. Okay, good. Gustav Nyqvist scores on Andre Valashevsky, tripling them up on shots, 12 to 4. Second period. Okay, good. Essa Lindel scores his first goal as a Detroit Red Wing, 21 shots to 11, almost doubling them up on shots now. And third period. There you go. 5 nothing win. Zetterberg, Mantha, and Nyqvist. There you go. And our 5 nothing route of the Tampa Bay Lightning is complete. Nice job, boys. Very happy with that. So, we are going 500 at the moment. Still staying competitive within the division, which is good. No team has gone undefeated so far. Florida have gone undefeated in regulation. We'll scout forwards in the W for a month. Why not? Okay. So, we are now sixth place. So, how quickly that things move. Fifth game of the season. We're home against the St. Louis Blues. Here we go, Detroit. Come on, boys. Zetterberg against Laterra for the opening face-off. First period. No score. 16 shots to 8, though. They're doubling us up. Careful here, Detroit. Let's let's give us a win for the home fans. Second period. There you go. Gustav Nyqvist scores on Jake Allen. 23 shots to 21 in favour of the Blues. I'm going to go times that simulation. I don't want to risk it. And just like that, Vladimir Tarasenko scores on Mrazic. Great. And they've got an extended power play. They managed not to score anything on it, so thanks. Detroit, come on. Score one for your home fans. Power play. Nothing happening. Come on, Detroit. Come on, Detroit. Let's score a goal. Come on, Detroit. Yes, Tyler Batuzzi. There you go. No! What? What? No! One second before the end of the game. And Petrangelo ties the game with a goal on Peter Mrazic. That's ridiculous. Tyler Batuzzi should have had the game-winning goal there. No! 34 shots to 32 in favour of St. Louis. God's sake. Come on, Detroit. Let's fight back. We'll fight through adversity and we'll win this. Overtime. Yes, Andreas Athanasio. See, you may have got a point. 
But that one second equaliser meant nothing. Oh, shit. Dylan Larkin's been injured. Edit lines manually then. Oh, God. I don't like the look of this. Well, the good thing is Franz Nielsen can take that place. And then Darren Helm can switch up here. And then we should have uh, Shane that can drop in. Like so. There you go. Right, good. Okay, so we've got a game against the Pittsburgh Penguins coming up. Currently top of the division, but once we actually get to the day, yep, we're down back to fourth. Very competitive so far in this uh, Eastern Conference Atlantic division. Here we go, so against Pittsburgh, let's go. Game six of the season. Let's go, Detroit. Crosby against Darren Helm for the opening face-off. First period. No score, wow. Ten shots to nine in favour of the Pengies. Second period. Oh, okay, so Trevor Daly scores on Jimmy Howard. 23 shots to 14, though, in favour of the Red Wings. Let's go times 8 simulation, see if we can get one back. Come on, Detroit. Power play for the Red Wings. Can't get anything done. Okay, come on, Detroit. Let's tie this game up. Power play for the Penguins. Good, nice penalty kill. Come on, Detroit. Use that as momentum. Tie the game. Don't get shut out. Don't get shut out. Detroit, come on. Detroit! Ah, oh, there you go. We get shut out by the Penguins. Ah, what a disappointing loss. God's sake. Oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What the hell am I? An old-time British guy? Hey, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, I think is what I meant to say. <laughs> so, we're going 500 at the moment. Oh, thank goodness, Dylan Larkin's back. It's exactly what I needed. I'll just go best lines for the time being. I can sort it out from there. So, Larkin, you're playing there. Um, Nielsen, you play there. Uh, who is it that we had up there? Somebody. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> and again. <coughs> and a third time. Bloody hell, excuse me. Um, we had Antoine Vermette in there, definitely. And then Riley Shane was out, wasn't he? Yeah. So if we swap him for uh, Darren Helm. Nice. So uh, Antoine Vermette goes here. Uh, Sveshnikov, yeah, yeah, Anthony Mantha was playing there. You know what, we might actually get Mato up there. Scorer, he's a checker, he's a scorer. So, Mantha, if we play you there, and you're, you're a checker, are you a, oh, you're, you're a checker as well. Oh, right, so that's a checking line, okay. Um, Mike Green should still be out, right? Ah, so Darnell Nurse is playing on the first pair, good. Okay, that's fine then. Right, so we're going 3, 3 and 0 oh to start the year. Game against the Montreal Canadiens. They beat us in the playoffs last year. Let's get some revenge. Here we go. So, Vermet against Galchenyuk for the opening face-off. First period. Okay, it's so a 2-0 lead for them. Ryan Reeves and Thomas Tartasaurus. Thomas Tartasaurus. Score on Peter Mrazic. 10 shots to 8 in favour of the hometown Habs at the Bell Centre. Second period. No score. 21 shots to 16 in favour of the Habs. If it goes 3-0... I'll just sim the rest of the period, but we'll go times eight for the time being. Power play for the Red Wings. It never scores. Power play for the Habs. They're, they're not going to score. Okay, it looks like we're not going to score anything. Scoring's a bit of a problem for us so far this season. We, we're going we're gonna to score anything, lads? Nope, we're going to get shut out two straight games. Great, perfect. Two straight games. It's taken over 120 minutes for us to actually score a goal. James wisniewski has been injured. Perfect. He's back November 1st. So he's back in a couple of days. Not a problem. Okay, let's play a game against the Ottawa Thunderers. Goody good. So we're 3-4-0. and oh. Jeremy Morin's back for Grand Rapids. That's good. Uh, this year's draft is meant to be weaker than normal. Good to know. So a game against Ottawa. Here we go. Come on, let's do this. Here we go, Detroit. Larkin against Brassard for the opening face-off. First period. Hoffman and Stone. Both the guys I was looking at potentially trading for score on me. That's just a massive fuck you, isn't it? 13 shots to 8 in favour of the Senators. Second period. Oh, Jesus Christ, Peter Mrazic. You're so shit. Brown, MacArthur and Ryan score on Mrazic. 23 shots to 19. Third period. Wow. So it took us... It took us about 150 minutes of play. Almost three games worth for Danny DeKaiser to score a goal. We lose 6-1. Detroit, what is happening here, lads? Get your heads out your asses. My goodness. 
James Wisniewski's back. Uh, edit lines manually then. Guys, this is not going very well, is it? You know what? Z Zetterberg, you're a second line forward. I'm going to play Larkin on the first line. You're not really doing anything for me, Zetterberg. Uh, why is Luke Glendening playing <laughs> as a defenseman? Ugh. Right. So I've already got a couple of ideas of what I'm going to do at the trade deadline. I have a feeling we're going to miss the playoffs again this year. Just a thought. So, Boston are 2-6-1. and one. They're playing even worse than we are. For the love of God, can we beat them in their home arena, Detroit? Let's do it. Come on. Here we go. Bolesky against Vermette for the opening face-off. They're already on a power play. First period. <sighs> Spooner and Bergeron score on Peter Mrazik. 13 shots to 9, though, in favour of the Red Wings. Red Wings, it's really nice that you get shots, but can you fucking score something for me, please? Yeah, cheers. I appreciate it. Second period. Oh, my God. We're going to get shut out again. Spooner scores on Mrazik. 24 shots to 17 in favour of the Red Wings. And third period... We have scored one goal in four games. Detroit, what the fuck? We have scored one goal in four games. That's really, really bad. Wow. One goal in four games? Jesus H. Christ. Right, a couple of line changes there. Fucking hell. Luke Glenn Denning there, have fun. Jimmy Howard, you're coming in. I don't even care. Mrazic's playing like shit anyway. So I'll give you, may as well give you a try. My goodness. Another game against Pittsburgh. Game 10 of the season. Can we go 4, 6 and 0 oh in our first 10 games of the season? I would really appreciate it. Please. Right, here we go. Let's do this. So, at home again. Gensel against Vermette for the opening face-off. First period. There you go. Mato and Zetterberg score on Murray. Finally. 13 shots to 9 in favour of the Red Wings. Second period. Oh, God. Nielsen and Larkin score. Malkin gets a hat-trick in about... Th wow, Malkin gets a hat-trick in three minutes. He averaged a goal a minute. My God. Malkin. Jesus, calm down, dude. Right, let's go times 8 simulation. Please, Detroit. Yes, Antoine Vermette. He scores a goal. Good lad. Power play for the Red Wings. Nothing happening on that. Wow, so we've managed to pick up the goal scoring again. That's good. Another power play for the Red Wings. Nothing happening. But we've got our insurance marker now, which is good. Simulate the rest of the period. There you go. Finally, after scoring one goal in four games, we score five in one. It's, it's so much nice when we actually play decent hockey. Right, so I'm going to play the next... Uh, actually, I'm going to look at our stats first. See who's scoring the most points in our first ten games of the season. Considering we had three games where we've been shut out. Uh, Gustav Nyqvist, 8 points on the season in 10 games. That's not too bad. 8 points for Zetterberg, and then it drops down to a point every 2 games. Wow, this is bad. Darnell Nurse, no points. He's a two-way defender, has not scored a single point this year. This is really, really, really bad. I mean, if we're going to tank, we may as well tank, you know. So, let's play the next 10 games of the season. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's up until the home game against Boston. So we have a home game against Florida to start our next 10 games of the season. Come on, let's let's go on a bit of a win streak here, lads. Home game against Florida. Geordie Ben's back. Um, we'll edit the lines manually then. So we just go to offense. Offense. And instead of Glenn Denning, thank you for your help, sir. But I'd rather have Geordie Ben in there if you don't mind. Thank you very much. There you go. So against Florida, we lose. Great. Against Tampa Bay, we shoot out, lose. Well, we get a points better than nothing, I guess. Against the New York Islanders, we lose 7-1. Great. Against Edmonton away, we win. Yay, 3-1. Against Minnesota, we lose 2-1. Yeah, I think we're tanking for the first pick this year, guys. Against the St. Louis Blues... We win 4-3. Good. Another rivalry game against the Colorado Avalanche. Come on. Can we get a win here, please? That would be very nice. Plus, plus, plus. Uh, Dylan Buglis. He is 24 years old. 80 overall. Sure, I'll claim you on waivers. Why not? Uh, overtime loss against Colorado. So that's a 6-5 loss. Get a point. Better than nothing, but still. Uh, we'll go four weeks for forwards in the queue. Okay, home against Chicago. 
Or oh, Mike Green's back. That's nice. We'll go best lines for now anyway. And we lose 2-1. Yep, we are definitely tanking for that first pick. Away against Toronto. We win 5-1. Good. Home against LA. We lose. Okay, so we're going 7-11 and 2 in our first 20 games of this season. Oh my goodness. We are currently last in our division. Well, that's good. I have a feeling we should just tank this year. Let's just tank this year. We'll see where we're at at the trade deadline. And Jimmy Howard I want to try and send away. Henrik Zetterberg I want to try and send away. And Antoine Vermette I want to try and send away. They're definitely the guys that are going if we're tanking. Justin Abdelkater, you're on a five-year contract. I might send you away as well. The guys I want to keep, Dylan Larkin, Athanasio, Sveshnikov, Batuzzi, Matto, maybe Nielsen. I don't like his contract, though. It upsets me. And out of these guys, Darnell Nurse, Lindell, and Wallet. Okay, so we might just, like, legit blow up this roster when it comes to the trade deadline. So we're not going to make any changes here because we don't need to. So if we go to... Uh, we want to play halfway through the season. So one, two... So wait, we want... We play 20 games, we want 21 games. One, two, three, four... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we want to go up to an away game against New Jersey. So let's see how this team produces now. So we get a shootout loss against Boston. Um, away against Washington. We lose 2-0. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a massive blip for the team this year. Uh, Nick Dowd is available to play. Best lines. I haven't really done a very good job with this. But then again, I've still got quite a lot of problems from the previous GM and his job. Uh, overtime loss, we got a point there. It's better than nothing, I guess. The, the Griffins are playing well, though, so that's good. Uh, away against Florida. It means our, our farm system's playing all right. Uh, a shootout loss against Florida. A loss against Ottawa. We really are tanking this season. My goodness. Uh, David Schlemko, uh, he is how old? I think he's in, he's in his 30s now. He's, he's not got any room to grow, so I'm not interested. A 4-1 win against Columbus, our first win in quite a while, actually. 5-1 loss, okay. Alec Axel Holmstrom is back for the Grand Rapid Griffins. A home game against Buffalo, we lose 4-1. Away against Tampa Bay, we lose 4-3. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is really bad. <laughs> Shootout win, 4-3. Shootout loss, 6-5. I don't really know what else to say now. I'm just going to kind of watch this all explode. So, uh, home game against Vancouver. We've got a promotion night on. Uh, scouting. So, yeah, we want to make sure our scouting is on point here. So, let's scout forwards in the O for three weeks. We need to start... We, I want to know who the first overall pick is supposed to be. 6-3 loss. A 7-2 win against Philadelphia. That's a bit of a blip in the system. Got 10 wins on the season. That's pretty good. Henrik Zetterberg's injured. I'm just beyond the point of caring with this team now. 3-2 win. Okay, two straight wins. Then a 6-4 loss against New Jersey. Abdul Kader's back. We're going to basically forget this season ever happened. You know? Against the New York Islanders. A 5-2 win. Okay, so we've got three wins in our last four games. That's pretty decent. Essa Lindell. He's been injured. Not a problem. Against Florida. Wow, okay. We're actually starting to go on a bit of a winning streak here. I don't want to play 500 hockey now. Good. A 3-0 loss against Florida. Thank you. Uh, Henrik Zetterberg's back in the lineup. Away against the Rangers. And we win. St okay. What's going on here now? I don't, I don't want to go... I don't want us to be, like, playing decent hockey now. I want us to be playing awful hockey. God, the minute I want us to play awfully, we start to actually play pretty well. Well, I say that. We're still 14-20-6. and six. 4-1 uh, win against Ottawa. And there we are. We're halfway through the season. 15-20-6 so far on the season. The good thing is we're still last place in our division. That's very good. I mean, some might say that's not very good at all. Gustav Nyqvist, 36 points in 41 games. That's pretty decent. So we are only three points above the Boston Bruins. So I thought we were at the bottom, but we're not. So we're three points above Boston. One, two, three. So we're we're in fourth last. We're in twenty seventh place in the league so far. Okay, so Arizona, wow, still at the bottom. Thirteen, twenty five, and four. Dallas going fifteen, twenty four, and two. So 
Uh, next episode, we're going to do the trade deadline and go to the end of the season. I am fully expecting us not to make the playoffs. I want to look at where our team is at by the deadline, and then I'm just going to completely blow this roster up. Zetterberg's going, Vermette's going, hopefully Jimmy Howard or Morazic are going. We're going to sort this team out, I think. We're going to get this done, and we're going to make sure this team is better in the years to come. So I am going to end this episode here then, folks. What do you guys think about this so far? Am I making the right decision in deciding to blow this team up? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!